Hey, welcome back. This is OmniFlash, and today I'm going to tell you my tips and tricks in Squad Strike. I'm giving away a $25 iTunes or Google Play gift card, which will be given out on September 15th to enter. You just have to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you'll be notified for future videos, and comment below. This costume, if you're interested, is the Amelia costume for ReZero. This is currently only on the Japan version. It's not even on the Korean version yet. We are currently in pre-season for Squad Strike, so I believe that the prizes, the awards that you get for Squad Strike, will be better when we get to regular season. The tips and tricks that I'm going to show you in this video should still apply in regular season. So currently in Squad Strike, you can Squad Strike all day. And for some strange reason, it does not actually count. It doesn't take my Squad Strike tickets when I Squad Strike outside of FOH time. Now if you do Squad Strike when FOH is open, then it does take your tickets and after 5 Squad Strikes you have to pay 10 gems to get 5 more times, but if you Squad Strike when FOH isn't open, it never takes your tickets and you can Squad Strike as long as you want. Now one thing about Squad Strike is that you do get 3 random teammates. One problem with Squad Strike is sometimes if somebody drops out, then you will actually have only 2 teammates and that guarantees you a loss. Surprisingly, the win or the defeat chest give about the same rewards, so it really doesn't matter that much. I do tend to uh, play squad strike all day, especially outside of FOH. This way, I can, I can just start collecting squad strike tokens. Um, although it is a very long process to get to 2,000, so that I can get my weapon costumes. The one thing that you can get from squad strike shop are those weapon costumes. They cost 2,000 squad strike points and are very, very important. Uh, that skill that Squad Strike a weapon costume gives you actually levels up as you go from epic to unique to mythic. This right here is a strange odd thing where my teammate showed up on the battlefield and then I just ran around my teammate because I've never seen that happen before and then I just let my enemy kill my teammate or something. But I've never seen that happen before. Teammate just shows up on the battlefield, stands there, does absolutely nothing. And then FGR YouTube uh, killed Dragoons, which is kind of strange because Dragoons isn't even playing right then. Just his uh, doppelganger. Okay, so in Squad Strike, you have this very, very long arena. It's not a small circle, so that you are actually able to run away. You can run away, heal back up and then just let your enemies chase you. Now there is a skill. You have three teammates, right? The top teammate has a slow grab. It's called a short grab. It actually slows you down. So if they do sh slow you down, then the enemy could catch you. Uh, but if not, you just run around the, the arena. They'll never ever catch you. Now the second skill that is available for the second person, they have an enhanced skill damage. So what you want to do is when your enemy has uh, is in range and not running away, you can turn that skill damage on and then just during that time, your uh, teammate can deal as much damage as possible. A good time to use enhanced skill is when the enemy has already used their invincibility. So as long as their invincibility is down, then you use enhanced skill and you won't waste any of your skill damage. If you want to run as a team, if, uh, you can use something like Discord and you can coordinate, tell your teammates when your enhanced skills is going to come up, when your invulnerability is going to come up and then they can plan 
to save their skills until you use your enhanced skill buff and that can amplify damage and win the game for you. So the third player on the very bottom they have the invulnerability skill and that is very very important. Uh, the invulnerability skill is whenever you want to get in close and deal damage you turn the invulnerability on and the enemy has no uh, no choice but to run away. They have to run away or they will take damage and deal no damage to you. It's actually best to if now this choice is random but it's actually best to have like, your strongest player go first because then you have enhanced skill plus invulnerability and you'll be able to apply it to your, your first player. Now if your your strongest player goes last the invulnerability skill is not available. You just don't get that invulnerability skill because the captain, the last player, is on the field and invulnerability is off the table. I normally do something like a hit and run situation. I'll go in, I'll throw down my skills, and I'll get you so low that you have to either run or if, if I don't do enough damage, then I'll start to run. The lightning skill that your allies have is actually very, very slow. You can actually see the lightning spot grow. It takes about one to one and a half seconds for the cast. So unless they are just standing there uh, attacking that lightning skill will never actually hit Three, two, what you see moksha doing is he's trying to stun the enemy blade master as as the blade master starts a skill and Three, trying to two, stun one. the blade master out of using that skill, wasting that skill. Moshe is pretty, pretty good Titan. He should actually join Immortals if he's actually listening to this. He might, he might decide to join Immortals, possibly. So right here, Moksha is running around trying to bait out some skills and waiting on his own skills to come back up so that he can go in, safely stun, do some damage, then get back out. So stun, do some damage, try to run back out. But fortunately for him, Trillium is quite strong, much, much more CP. And uh, it's not gonna make it. Three, two, one, stop. All right, so Trillium thinks that he's got it all set because they have two people. They have Trillium plus Endgame. Endgame, Trillium, both great archers. He thinks that he can just stand toe to toe with me. And he uh, thinks that Dragoon will finish me up. Now Dragoons is a very strong archer and this is a very close game. I think the difference is possibly that Dragoons is using life wings and I use skill damage wings. I use the dragon wings. I think I'd probably do more damage that way. Especially if you have me less than 50% health. If you have me less than 50% health, I'm probably doing even more damage because of that skill damage boost. And this is one reason why I hide my wings. I hide my wings so my enemy doesn't know uh, when or when not to run away. They don't know if my wings are going to heal me, whether my wings are going to increase my PvP attack or my skill damage. 
So I did some very lucky dodges, and uh, I, I actually have almost the same health as him. And I just decided, let's go for this. Let's go. Let's take this down. Let's find out who wins, and I won. Flash gets play of the game. Yeah, yeah, that's that's basically what I what I uh, aim for is play of the game. If I could, I could just do absolutely nothing, let all your teammates die, and then just get play of the game. That's that's how you play Squad Strike. No, actually, don't do that. Help your teammates out. Three, two, one, start. Alright, so Eric Death has next to no health. What he's trying to do is get away, try to heal some before he has to run past me, <coughs> and he doesn't run past me. It's very, very difficult to run past ranged characters in uh, Axe because our projectiles, our arrows do not miss. Now, did you know that, you know how you can't see your enemies off screen? Did you know that you can go into first person view? This is pretty much first person view. Well, it's like behind the person view, which is very close. It's, 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 it's a very good way that you can see everything close up. It, it looks very good. The graphics is beautiful. Plus, you get you know where your enemy is the whole time. Now, using the other view, the third person 2.5D view is a good way to see the entire battlefield. Like right now, you can't see behind you, right? But also, if you turn around, you don't know where the enemy is off screen. Now I know exactly how far they are off screen. I know if my attacks will reach them. And I know how far to run to stay right outside the attacks. And you know, this is this this is what I like to do. I think it's really fun. Just have a mage not being able to see where I am because that mage is probably still in that third person view and uh, just doesn't know what the heck I'm doing. And this is how you win games, guys. You gotta use your brains. You gotta go into first person view and you just gotta run in circles until your enemy gives up. Alright, thanks for watching. This is Squad Strike. I'll get you the next video soon. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below.